Welcome everybody. We are in the lobby at River Glen getting ready for service. Sometimes it feels like we are in a world of running after more. Maybe you can relate. It seems like people are always going after more of the things that just don't satisfy us. What if there was something that really did satisfy and it actually was really good for you too? We're glad you're here because each weekend during the More series, you'll discover all about how Jesus can lead you into a life of more, more life, more joy, more love, more hope, and more impact. You were actually made for this. You were made for more. So go on and get comfy, disconnect from all the daily stresses that you experience, and let's focus on learning more about a God who loves you. You are meant to be here. If you are newer with River Glen, we want to hear from you. If you need prayer or have some faith questions, let us know by filling out a welcome card. And we always send our first time guests a gift to say thanks for being here. So let us know if you're new. You can get the welcome card by clicking out of the full screen mode and clicking on the welcome button or the link provided by your hosts. Our online hosts are happy to answer questions and join you for service. So join the chat and let them know where you're joining in from today. We're just about ready to start. So if you haven't already done it, grab something to eat and drink so you can celebrate communion together with us later in the service. Let's head on in. Well, good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you to your honor here in the room. While we stand together, we are going to worship the God who reigns above it all, the one who created us. Let's sing to him this morning.
Uh, well, welcome, welcome, good morning. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time right here with us. If you happen to be newer here today, I wanna to encourage you, take out the welcome card and the chair backs in front of you and let us know how we can be praying for you today. If you're joining us online, you can click on the connect button. Let us know how we can be praying for you. We like to also welcome all of our first time guests with a gift. So make sure you stop by the Welcome Center. It's right between the lobby doors on your way out today. Um, give us a, a high five, tell us hi, uh, we have a gift for you. Well, today we have something more in store for you. Um, every weekend of this series, we've been doing something a little unexpected with a fun little giveaway. So today I gotta ask you guys out there, anybody have some fun plans after service outside? Hands up, anybody, anybody? One, two, back there, okay. All right, well, I'm gonna do a throw out, so uh, everybody kind of heads up. Whoa, we got one here. Whoa, I've got a terrible arm. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so if you did not get one of these RG, RG logo caps, I'm so sorry, but you can find yours on the RG shop. It's on our website. Um, we're selling them for cost not for profit at all. Really, it's just an answer. We had some people that wanted to sport their RG logo wear. So now you can get your very own. And when people stop you out in public and say, hey, what's RG? You can tell them about a church home that you have found. All right, let's celebrate.
command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but put their hope in God, who, reach, who richly provides for us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. This is the life, the more life that God wants and God has intended for you and for me. And every week we step out in faith and trust our God in a time of offering, this is a time that we generously give a portion of what God has so richly blessed our lives with so that others may see him through us. It is our offering that fuels our ministries here at River Glen, and it fuels our mission of making more and better followers of Jesus. You can all be a part of this mission. Each, every, each and every one of us is a part of this when we give. You can give simply by texting River Glen at 77977. You can push the give button online or on our website, or you can choose to use our offering boxes that are out in the lobbies. However you decide to give, we're just thankful that you are part of this mission with us and that we will continue to make more and better followers of Jesus. Our church is getting ready to do something more something big and it is a step of faith and we all get to be a part of this together on October 10th and 11th we are going to be do doing something called our big offering giveaway and this is something big we are going to give each each every single penny of that offering in order to enrich the lives of those um, our brothers and sisters, the least of these, right? And all of our outreach partners. We want to bless them with something big so that they know Jesus and that they can see Jesus working through us. And so I'm really excited to be a part of this. Last weekend, we announced our first focus area for the big offering giveaway, and that was to love more locally. This weekend, I get to tell you about the second focus area, and that is something completely new for us. It is to love more regionally in the city of Milwaukee. Pretty exciting. So you may know uh, we have a new outreach partner. They're Christian-based. They're nonprofits. Uh, they visited us during show up weekend. It's Upstart Kitchen. So we're excited to tell you more about Upstart Kitchen. They're going to be feeding into people feeding them physically. And then we also got to meet um, with one of the local faith, um, faith leaders in Milwaukee that we're going to be partnering with, just one of them. Um, and they're gonna, he's going to tell us more about our vision of going into Milwaukee and feeding them spiritually through the vision of church planting. Let's listen. My name is Walter Harvey and I serve as the President and CEO of PRISM Economic Development Corporation. And I'm also the Apostolic Leader at Park Lawn Assembly of God. For 28 years, I served as the lead pastor. One of the greatest assets in the city of Milwaukee are the people. And there are people of hope, there are people of resiliency, there are people of, of ingenuity and creativity. And what we began hearing is that people want opportunities for entrepreneurship, they want access to capital to fund those businesses. They want, you know, family sustaining uh, wages and good jobs. They want safe streets. And so we began partnering with other faith communities, other foundations, uh, government entities, and even corporations, and just everyday common people to bring this Upstart Kitchen to a reality, which today is serving food entrepreneurs from the greater Milwaukee area. I've been working in different capacities in urban development in Milwaukee for all my professional life. And then uh, I was asked to come here to help out also uh, with PRISM EDC. And I was really excited to do it, partly because I knew Bishop Harvey and have a great admiration and respect for him. But I also really love what they're trying to do here. My main focus is really on church multiplication. 
uh, here in the greater Milwaukee area. We have a vision for 100 faith communities in Milwaukee County, uh, almost like an underground church, like we see in third world countries, where the church is not defined by a place, but it's defined by people. And wherever we go, we're seeking to pray, we're seeking to care, we're seeking to share, and to make disciples of those whom God has given us relationship with. You know, it's amazing how much food is such a common denominator for us all, right? And, uh, and a lot of people in the inner city have started to do food gigs, you know, and they, it's kind of like a side hustle where they're doing stuff out of their kitchen uh, and, you know, they, they start to develop a reputation. Uh, but what they really need in order to go to the next step is a commercial kitchen and help getting licensing and uh, to, to legitimize their business so that their business can expand. And uh, that's what Upstart Kitchen is all about. The other thing we started to do uh, once the COVID pandemic struck is we said, well, how can we respond to this issue? And so we started preparing emergency meals for people, uh, large volumes of prepared meals that we distribute through various partners to uh, individuals and families that are experiencing food insecurity and who are very vulnerable to illness. They think we're doing like 7,000 meals a month now. And actually one of the recipients of our meal program is your RG Cares initiative. We're in this, this network, which Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, we're many members, yet we're one body. And so those of us who are people of faith, we understand that. And we understand that we're connected. And so this is an opportunity for us as the church. It's an opportunity for us to really live out the great commission and the great commandment. Because I think what has been lacking is an emphasis on loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. And so love is action, and so we're bringing the action together with a practical place to apply resources and to help people. And so we need, uh, we need the connection of suburban, urban, rural, city. We need the ethnic connection because we're better together. You're invited to be part of something more, more life, joy, love, hope, and impact. Let's love more regionally. Yeah, what a great video. I, I am so proud of River Glen as a church. It, it's our generosity that help makes a difference in so many lives, locally, regionally, globally. And, and I can't wait. Amy talked about that big offering giveaway in just two weeks. I can't wait to see the outcome of our generosity in and around where we are right now. In case we haven't met before, my name's John. I'm one of the pastors here. I'm really glad that you're with us. You're here hanging out in Waukesha. If you're out in Pewaukee, hello to Pewaukee. Online, we have a number of ways you can watch online. So people are watching us on YouTube right now. They're on Facebook. They're on our online campus. So it's just wonderful that there are so many different ways that we can get together because even though we might be in five different locations, whatever number of locations, we are all one church gathered in, in, in Jesus' name. And so this morning, I just want to start with a rhetorical question, which simply means you don't have to answer it. Uh, but wouldn't it be great to get and have everything that we wanted in life? Now, I know from a young age, we're taught not to be selfish, but let's think about this for a second. You get anything, everything you want. And not only that, you get, I want what I want, and I want it now, and you get it. It's that kind of idea. Just imagine what it'd be like if you found yourself in a situation like this guy. Take a look at the screen.
<laughs> Oops. <laughs> All of us know what it's like to be selfish and to have selfish desires. M- many of us, we've spent countless hours of our lives chasing things that we think will satisfy us. Now, chances are none of us have ever found ourselves stuck in a safe, but we might know what it feels like to be stuck on a treadmill chasing more stuff with this belief that stuff is going to satisfy us. We, we think that if we just get the right things, then we're going to be satisfied. And yet, no matter what we get or how much we achieve in life, it seems that we never find that sense of satisfaction that we're looking for. No matter what we get, in the end, we feel like there's got to be more. Well, there is more. But the more we're looking for, it's not found in the stuff we chase. It's not found in things and possessions and and, and promotions. In fact, the more that we are truly wired and designed to experience is found in one thing. It's actually found in one person, and his name is Jesus. And Jesus came to teach us, and he came to show us what it means to have an abundant life, to have the more that we were designed to have. And so the name of the series we're in right now, it's titled More. And the first week of the series, we talked about more life, having life to the full, living abundantly. And the last weekend, Ben talked about more joy. Today, we're going to talk about this thing called love. And the question is, is there anything we want in life to have more than love? Is there anything we all need more than love? And I was thinking about it this week, and it made me realize I've been blessed with some amazing relationships. I have a family who loves me. I have a great group of friends that care about me. I've got these awesome coworkers, and and I enjoy them most of the time. (laughs) All of the time. But with all that said, though, right, if we think about this, there's times when I still feel this need for for more love so much that it almost feels like there's this emptiness inside. It's that feeling that there has got to be more. Do you ever feel that way? The teachings of Jesus, they reveal his wisdom and his plan for us to live this life of more. And Jesus, his teachings, they can also almost seem counterintuitive because Jesus has an understanding of life that goes far beyond our own. And if we were to ask Jesus, if we said, hey, Jesus, what does it look like for me to live a life of more love? You know what he'd say? Well, actually, this is what he did say. He said this, my command is this, Love each other as I have loved you. In the answer to the question, how can I experience more love? Jesus said, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And so when we look at those words, we got to realize they are straight from Jesus. And doesn't that seem a little counterintuitive? Because for me, it does. As I think about this, if I were to design a way for me to get more love in my life, what I would do is I would simply make a list of all the people in my life that love me, and then I would just expect them to start loving me more. Isn't that the way we think it works? If the people in my life, if the people in your life, if they would just start to love us more, then, we get, then we'd get the more love we want, we'd get the more love that we desire. But that, that's not what Jesus says. Jesus says it's the complete opposite. He says, love each other as I have loved you. And so today what we're going to do, we're going to spend most of our time looking at that verse. And and what I want to do, though, is I'm going to start at the end of the verse, and we're going to work our way back to the beginning of the verse. And, and, And to help us with that, first we need to understand what Jesus said, what he meant when he said, as I have loved you. And to understand that, We have to understand Jesus. We need to understand his heart, his mind, his passions. We we need to understand Jesus' very nature. And Jesus is God, and at his very nature, he's communal. What Jesus is showing us is we best demonstrate love connected to others. And that leads us to God. God is a God who exists in community, and many of us know that, and this may sound really familiar, but if this is new for you, God is a relational being, he's one being, and yet he exists in three persons or three expressions. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's um, hard, this is a hard concept for us to wrap our minds around because it's nothing like we've ever thought about before. And it's a mystery, and this mystery has been called, been come to known as the Trinity. And 
each person of the Trinity, they're distinct, and yet they're intertwined. They're intertwined so much that they're inseparable. And they have this selfless relationship, which they just all revolve around each other. None of them are selfish. None of them say, hey, me first, the, the rest of you, you two other ones, you are my support staff. That's not what it is. Instead, each person of the Trinity loves, def- adores, defers to, and rejoices in the others. And that's why the Apostle John, John's the disciple who knew Jesus the best, he described God this way. He wrote, God is love. He said, God's in love. God is love. And so it's important to understand what John didn't say. John didn't say, God is loving. John didn't say, God likes to love. Both of those are true statements. But what John said is, God is love. So God's a relational being whose very nature is love. And love looks for an object of affection. And that's kind of a fancy way to say love looks for someone to love. And so what is God's object of affection? Who does he look to love? Well, we go back to the very first book in the Bible, in the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created mankind, and he created us in his image so that we could be loved and that we could enter into this communal relationship. He designed us to be loved and to love in an intimate relationship with him and with each other. But here's the hard truth. Even though we're created in God's image, we didn't choose to follow his way of selfless devotion. Instead, we turned our back on God. We decided to seek our own will. We decided to seek our own satisfaction. And our selfish desires betrayed God's love and broke our relationship with him and each other. And so after we did that, what did God do? Did he just wash his hands of us? Did he just say, figure it out on your own? No. He came after us, and he came after us himself in the person of Jesus to show us what true love looks like. In the Gospel of Luke, way back in Luke chapter 2, we hear the the story of the birth of Jesus, and the angel of the Lord, he, he, he goes to the people in the town, he says, behold, unto you, Today, in the town of David, a Savior is born. See, even though Jesus is God, and even though that all the glory and the honor and the worship of heaven was his, he willingly chose to leave, to be born a human being. And then he humbled himself. He humbled himself to be tortured and even dying a cruel death on the cross. And so Jesus joyfully and willingly, he agreed to lay down his life to bring us good. And what's beyond my comprehension is when I think about this, he did this while we were still sinners. In in other words, when we were Jesus' enemies, when we were enemy of God, we were at war with him, he pursued us. As we went on chasing our selfish desires, we turned our back on God, we did our own thing, we sought our own satisfaction, and yet, through his death on the cross, Jesus demonstrated that nothing, not not even our rebellion against him, could keep him from loving us. Jesus himself said, this is the night of the Last Supper, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. I want to focus on a word friend here for a second. Do you ever consider how significant it is that Jesus calls us friends? In the ancient world, friendships were very important, and they operated on a number of different levels. There were political friendships, and these were formed for strategic advantages. So, for example, some people were known as friends of Caesar's. And and then there was friendships, they were called patronage friendships, and that's when a wealthy person would become a benefactor of someone less well off. And and, and then there were mutual friendships, and these mutual friendships are friendships among equals, where there was a sharing of possession, there was a sharing of ideas, there was a sharing of love, there was a sharing, this idea of doing life together. And so when Jesus calls us friends, that's how he's defining us as friends. It's that mutual friendship. And so the bottom line is that a life of more love, it begins with understanding that we are unconditionally, we are lavishly, we are completely, and we are eternally loved. 
Jesus joyfully and willingly laid down his life for us to bring us good. Here's how Pastor Timothy Keller summarized this idea. He said, you are more sinful than you could dare imagine, and you are more loved and accepted than you could ever dare hope. That means when we walk out of here today, we have to know and we have to understand in our heart of hearts that Jesus loves us. And and, and all of that right there, that's what Jesus is getting to in this verse when he says, as I have loved you. That's how he loves us. When Jesus did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves, when he took the punishment that should have been our punishment, he took that initiative and he showed us what love is. And because we're loved, we can be free. We can be free from trying to impress others because in Jesus, we have acceptance. We can be free from trying to gain from others because in Jesus, we're fulfilled. We can be free from trying to dominate others because in Jesus, we have peace. And that's the point he's making here. I love the way Pastor John Stott, he put it this way. He said, no one who has been to the cross and seen God's immeasurable and unmerited love displayed there can go back to a life of selfishness. Most of us, consciously or unconsciously, we believe the way we're going to experience more love in our life is if people in our lives just start loving us more. And I'm guessing that's what most of us believe, but Jesus teaches the exact opposite. And again, it's counterintuitive because it's not the way we think. Jesus says the way that you and I are going to experience more love in our lives and when, is when we start loving each other just as we have been loved. And it is really true because we receive more when we give more. We find more when we release more. We experience more when we surrender more. And that's why I think Jesus' teaching is so counterintuitive because the way to a life of more love, it isn't having people in our lives just love us more. No, the way to find a life of more love is when we joyfully and willingly lay down our lives to bring others good. And it's counterintuitive, but that's the way it works. And I think in our heart of hearts, I think we know that's the way that it ought to work. Now, there's a lot of great people in our lives that demonstrate this kind of love, and I'm sure you can think of some. But I was thinking, and I came up with this one. Anybody grow up on TV watching Mr. Rogers or maybe your brothers or sisters? Yeah, there's a few handfuls out there, yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. Rogers, his story is a story of joyfully and willingly laying down his life over and over again to bring children good. Mr. Rogers, he's an ordained minister, he, he was a man defined by his Christian faith. And, and the message that he taught every day on that TV program was shaped by what he believed. And every day, it's been said, before he entered into the studio, he would pray, dear God, let some word that is heard be yours. And here's just an example of what happened every day on this show. Let's take a look. Love is at the root of everything, all learning, all relationships, love or the lack of it. Children have very deep feelings, just the way everybody does. There must be times when you do feel blue. I'm not feeling blue right now, though. Me neither. <laughs> Won't you be my neighbor? Well, I suppose it's an invitation. It's an invitation for somebody to be close to you. The greatest thing that we can do is to help somebody know that they're loved and capable of loving. That's from a documentary in 2018. Did anybody catch it? Watch that documentary? Yeah, right? It is well worth the watch. And, and did you catch it when he said, he said this, the greatest thing that we can do is to help somebody know that they're loved and capable of loving. And I want to repeat that. The greatest thing that we can do is to help somebody know that they're loved and capable of loving. And Jesus came and he laid down his life so that you and I would know that we're loved and we're capable of loving. Love each other as I have loved you. When we know we're loved, We are free to live that way, to joyfully and to willingly lay down our lives to bring others good. And and, and so what might this look like for you and I to do this? 
See, a life of more love lies in the answer to that question. And, and when I look at my own life, I realize that I'm a work in progress. Many of you, you know me. You know that's true. And so I can't just like flip a switch and all of a sudden start loving like this. Following Jesus, it, it's the best way to live, but it's not the easiest way to live. You know what the easiest way to live is? It's to be selfish. It's for me to think about my needs, my wants, desires, and to put them first and foremost in front of everyone else always, and it's for you to do the same. Learning to live a life of more love. It's a product of a heart committed to following Jesus. And now we're at the first part of the verse when Jesus said, my command is this. Learning to live a life of more love requires a daily decision to follow the life that Jesus lived. Following Jesus is the best way to live, but it's not the easiest way to live, and that's why we should never try to do this on our own. Uh, Of course, as followers of Jesus, we're not alone. Jesus is with us through his spirit. When Jesus lived on the earth, he made his dwelling among us. He also demonstrated that the life he calls us to do, to live, is something meant to be lived out in a community of believers. Jesus had his followers and he had his disciples. And today, that community of his followers, it's called the church. Here at River Glen, the idea that life is meant to be lived together with other Christ followers, it's something that we call connect. And connect is all about the relationships that we have with other people in the church. It's about forming a real link with others. And most of us are probably willing to admit in life what we're looking for, we're looking for something that's real, something of significance, and something that will stand the test of time. At River Glen, we believe a Jesus-centered, grace-filled, spirit-led, mission-focused, biblical community is that real link. It's an eternal community where we can experience real love as we joyfully and willingly lay down our lives to bring each other good. And we believe that the most likely way that you can experience, is that, experience that is being connected in a group. And, and groups are gatherings of people who are trying to learn the way of life that Jesus taught. It, they're people who are committed to taking steps from selfishness to love and, and doing it together. Now, do we always get it right? Of course not, right? But the move from selfishness to love, it, it requires a place to work it out, and a group is intended to be a place where people learn to joyfully and willingly lay down their lives for one another. And the best way this fall, the best way right now to get connected in that kind of group is to explore the possibilities in either Rooted or Alpha. Both of these options, they're a great link to that, that real link, that real life that we're looking for. So I have two challenges. The first challenge is if you're not in a group, get connected. Rooted and Alpha, they're part of that group strategy to get everyone connected and plugged into communion. I had a couple friends this week, they came in and they sat down and they talked about their experiences with groups. So let's take a look at the screens. I'd say a couple reasons. One, Groups are not something that we thought of. It's not a program that somebody came up with. It's not a trend. It's right there in the New Testament. When people started following Jesus, the first followers of Jesus, they would gather together in a large group at the temple. And then during the week, they would get together in people's homes, in each other's homes for meals and prayer and Bible study and communion and and just doing life together. And so, we're, we wanted to follow that example. And then I also think in the New Testament, there's a phrase, one another, that is used, I think, over 50 times. Love one another, serve one another, encourage one another, carry one another's burdens, and just on and on. And it's hard to, it's hard to practice those one another's in a large gathering. It's so much easier to do in, in a smaller group. And that's really where, you, you fulfill those commands to, to love one another best. Well, on Labor Day, <laughs> I decided I was going to get some landscaping done out front. And um, I went and got mulch, and then I had these cardboard things that I was going to put down and then put mulch on them. And I tripped over the cardboard and fell into the brick house. 
and um, broke um, my upper humerus bone, which is part of my shoulder. And so I am in a sling. I've, I've had meals. I've had a, uh, one of our one of the couples here are helping me with all kinds of landscaping projects um, that we've been working on from our small group, and they're just the people that um, when you need something, you give them a call, and you know they're going to be there for you. It's one of my best friends I, I met in group and got to know in in group. Our current group was actually started as a rooted group uh, two years ago, and it was a random group. We just came to Sue and we said, hey, we'd love to. Um, lead a group, we think this is a great um, program and we want to be a part of it. And she just kind of chose people to be in our group. And we got so close to them. We had such a great experience in Rooted that we are still a group today. Yeah, we had uh, two couples that actually started in Alpha together. And at the end of Alpha, those two couples decided to go through uh, Rooted and they ended up in our group with some others. And then we did Rooted together and decided to keep going and become a life group. And it's been a great group. Yeah, it has been. I think it's always good to hear other people and, and learn their stories, to tell your story. And um, I think it's a, it challenges you to be vulnerable, to share um, what you're struggling with, what you're, what you're excited about um, with other people. Yeah, I want to thank, thank Ben and Marnie for doing that. Um, quick update on Marnie. She's recovering well. She's healing. Be praying for her. Uh, she's looking for tennis partners. Um, Rooted and Alpha are great first steps. They're great next steps. It's easy to sign up. You can go to the Group Life page on our website, and you can just type in, and, and you can sign up for Rooted and Alpha there. The Connect cards, if you're in Waukesha or Pewaukee today, they're in the seat backs in front of you. You can fill one of those out. You can sign up that way. You can drop it on, drop it off on your way out. Um, we have people at the Connect Wall, both campuses. They are happy to talk to you about Rooted and Alpha and what the expectations are and what you can um, get out of those. So stop out at the Connect Wall in the lobby and sign up for that today. And, and if you're already in a group, here, here's the second challenge, and it's, it's a simple one. It's, it, it's bring the good. If you're in a group, start bringing the good. Continue to bring the good. A life of more love happens when we, find Je when we follow Jesus' command and we joyfully and willingly lay down our lives to bring other, others good. So think of, think of the people in your group. How, how can you bring them good this week? And there, there's, there's um, a number of different ways to do it. If you're in a group, in many groups, and, and I'm saying this out loud for myself because this one applies to me specifically, many groups take off for the summer. So if your group took off for the summer, start meeting again, start getting together. I saw a couple guys from my group this morning, and uh, I took the summer off. Uh, summer ended like two weeks ago. So if that's you guys, summer's over. Get back and start meeting again and start doing good. Get together. And it's, it's like Ben talked about, those one another's. Encourage one another. Serve one another. Start doing life together again. A great way that you can bring the good is you can invite people to join your group. Sometimes one of the hardest things to do for us is to sign up for something new. And it's so much easier if we're invited and we know that we're going to show up and somebody we know is going to is, is going to be there waiting and expecting us to be there. So invite someone to join your group. And it can be simple stuff. You can bring the good in simple ways. Maybe you just share an encouraging text to everyone in your group. Or, or maybe you, you send out a verse. Maybe there's someone in your group and you're praying for them. Let them know specifically and how you're praying for them. That's another example of just bringing the good. We have people, we all have people in our lives. And maybe someone in your group, there's a need and you can meet that need. So just go ahead. Don't wait, don't wait for a sign. Don't wait for anything. Just address the need and, and meet it for them. Sometimes what we need is we just need an empathetic listener. So you might have someone in your group and they just need you to go out, have a cup of coffee because they need someone to listen to them. That's an example of bringing the good. There's millions of ways that we can bring the good. And so just start because when we do those things, that's bringing a good, that's loving others as Jesus has loved us. So this week, if you're already in a group, let's ask this question. How can I joyfully and willingly lay down my life to bring the others in my group good? 
And let's go ahead and do that. And Jesus came to bring us a life of more. More life, more joy, and more love. All we ever have sought, all the satisfaction, everything we've ever pursued, it it can be found in him. And just imagine what our lives would be like if we embraced and took fully hold of the way that he taught us to live. Jesus said, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And now in just a minute, we're going to take communion together. If you're here in Waukesha and you haven't grabbed the communion, there's two tables right back there. Pewaukee, those tables are in the back. And we're going to take communion because Jesus invites us into this eternal community. And in fact, he desires all of us to experience this with him. And so much that he gave his life, he gave his life willingly for you and me. And it might have been one thing if Jesus would have told us, if he said, hey, go get your act together and then come back and see me and we'll talk about what I can do for you. That's not what Jesus did, right? God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's this radical, inclusive, sacrificial love that invites us into this eternal community. And so today, we celebrate what what he's done for us and what he's doing for us. We take that bread that represents his body that was broken for us, and, and, and we're drinking from the cup that represents the blood being poured out for us. And at River Glen, our our community is open to anybody who's a follower of Jesus. And so I'm going to pray, and then let's take communion. Father God, thank you so much for days like today where we're free to gather, where we can come and we can explore your truth, we can explore the teachings of the Bible, and we can take a look and how Jesus lived, and how it demonstrates how we're supposed to live. God, when we focus on our own wants, desires, and our will, and our selfishness, we're living a life of less. You have called us to a life of more. And God, so I just pray that all of us, that you fill our hearts, you fill our minds, you fill our spirit with the desire for you, because that's going to be the bridge that takes us to a life of more. When we embrace that life of more, we're able, God, to bring other people along. So take our, our foolish pursuits and, and, and trade them in, that we would pursue you, that we would love you, that we would willingly lay down our lives for others. God, fill us with the more love. May that be what we seek. God, we thank you so much that you pursued us. You pulled us out of that life of less by sending Jesus And it's in this moment that we remember everything that he's done for us. We lift this all up and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stay with us for our last song together.
so much for being here with us at River Glen. No matter if you're online or here in person, we're just grateful to see your faces. We hope we will see you next time. Thanks for spending time together with us. I hope that you're encouraged and able to apply today's teaching into your life immediately and that you can't wait to join us for service next weekend, either online or in person at our Waukesha or Pewaukee campuses. If you haven't already done so, click the connect button and fill out a welcome card. Be sure to let us know how we can be praying for you and how we can help you take your next steps in faith. And if you have questions about faith and life, I encourage you to join one of our Alpha groups starting this fall, either online September 30th or in person at our Waukesha campus on October 1st. Alpha is a great next step, whether you are far from faith or a lifelong follower of Jesus. Alpha helps you explore life's big questions in a safe, non-judgmental environment. Feel free to sign up for Alpha on our welcome card, our website, or ask your hosts about Alpha. Finally, when you fill out the welcome card, every Thursday you'll receive my What's Happening RG e-newsletter filled with encouragement and updates about River Glen for you and your family. I invite you to be on mission with River Glen, to celebrate each week at service, to contribute to our community and world, and to connect with others in faith. This is just one way that together we can make more and better followers of Jesus. Stay safe and stay on mission. See you soon.